Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to the 10 to 80% charging time and charging speed test, where we put the manufacturer's claimed charging speed to the test. And Polestar claimed that this Polestar 2 standard range single motor has a peak charging speed of... Yeah, Polestar don't actually claim a peak charging speed for this, the base version, the entry-level version of the Polestar 2. But from the test, from the charging sessions I've already done, Peak charging speed should be around 115 or 116 kilowatts, but that's what we're going to put to the test in today's video. But maybe more importantly than the actual peak charging speed is what the charging curve looks like. So when do you get that peak speed? When does it start to taper off? When should you disconnect from the charger because of above a certain percent you may get very slow charging. So it may not even make sense if you're on a trip. And also, what is the charging speed in kilometers per hour? So that is how many kilometers of range do you gain per hour of charging? And also kilometers per minute, the same. How many kilometers of range do you gain per minute of charging? And also in miles per hour. So all of these numbers, all of this data, we will be collecting in today's video. And at the very end of the video, we're going to put all of that into a chart, rank this car against its competition, and see how it stacks up. And also, I'm going to show you guys the actual charging session. We're going to do that very briefly, just overlay it so you guys can, you know, watch it in real time. But what I'm very interested about in today's video is to see how this compares to the long range version of this car with a bigger battery pack. Because yes, this does charge slower, but with that smaller battery pack, will it charge quicker, you know, 10 to 80% or will it charge slower? And also considering the range of this, which, you know, compared to something like the long range dual motor, which has 470 kilometer WLTP range, this has 444. Is there a huge difference in the actual gained kilometers per charging, even though this thing, you know, in kilowatts charges slower. So we're going to put all of that to the test today and I'm so interested in finding that out. And also before we came to this charger, we put it into the navigation system, which now lets the car preheat the battery. This is a 2022 model with a heat pump, which is an optional extra in this car. But what's not an optional extra is the latest software update, the P1.7. If you want to know all the information about that update, there will be a few videos linked in the description box down below explaining it, going through that. But what is relevant for this video here is the added preheating to this car. So that means navigating to a DC fast charger like the one I have right behind me here, the car will preheat the battery. So that's what we've done today. It's been very cold today when we, you know, when I got to the car, it was around zero degrees Celsius, even ice on the windshield. So I've been driving this car for about 40 minutes, just around town here, a little bit on the motorway here, but you know, just small driving and also navigating to that charger. So while connecting here, we should get that peak charging speed. We're going to connect here with 4% and now it's around four degrees Celsius. So we should have enough heat in the battery with the latest preheating you know uh, addition here so we should be getting that peak charging speed and lastly guys before we actually start the actual charging session if you're new to the channel thank you so much for stopping by i'm chris i have this channel dedicated to testing evs i do tests like this 10 to 80 percent charging speed and charging time test i do range test i do my norwegian high speed run which is a time attack from also to Kristiansand and back again, where we have to, you know, try to battle the clock on a route that is 600 kilometers with several charging sessions to see how it is to travel long distance with an EV in the real world. I also do reviews and a whole bunch of other EV content. So if you like EV content, if you like EVs, please be sure to drop a thumbs up on the video down below. That is much appreciated, so thank you very much. And also consider subscribing to the channel and then hitting that notification bell. Thank you very much. So guys, we're going to continue on with the actual charting session here now. I'm going to overlay the charting session with some video and I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. Watch me walk away, putting myself on display. One, two, three a day. I'm on my way, on my way. I'ma have you on tiptoes, watching my diamond after glow. I know you wanna take me home. I'm on my way, on my way. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do, I'm O-N-W. 
Welcome back after the actual charging session guys and today we have had so many issues my camera memory card issues I forgot a memory card for the GoPro and as you guys can see from the actual charging session we're missing 50 to 65 percent and that is because while charging a guy pulled up in a Nissan Dees NV electric vans and he was going to charge at the charger I was connected to even though there was a vacant charger right next to it and I'm like excuse me could you be able to choose the other charger the one that I'm not using because I'm trying to film a charging test and he's like I would love to but I have the Chatmo connector on my Nissan so I can't use the other one and I'm like ah oh, of course so he was really nice we got to chat chatted for like 10 minutes while he was waiting super cool guy so thank you very much but what happened is that the screen turns off while I'm out of the car not sat in the seat so oh so we lost about 15 percent of charting but I, I'm I remember what charting speeds we were at it's just missing in the video so I'm going to overlay the charting curve now guys this should be pretty pretty accurate there may be small like variations from 50 to 65 percent that I didn't catch but this is basically 99 percent the charting curve and as you guys can see it is pretty pretty flat from 10 percent we connected out around four percent so from 10 percent to almost 40 percent the charting curve is basically basically flat and then it drops off a little and then it really starts to dip you know once we get to like 60 65 percent yeah then it really starts to dip down um, in the speed down to like 60 kilowatts but I didn't it's not bad it's not bad at all but what is the most impressive here is I'm going to give you guys the chart now and that is the the time guys look at the time at the chart down below this car in time charges faster than the Polestar 2 stand long range dual motor I haven't done the charting test with the long range single motor but as you guys can see from the chart down below in kilometers per hour this is faster just barely but it is faster and that is so cool to see so I've been a bit disappointed about that peak charting speed and again I mean we peaked at 118 kilowatt which is a little bit faster than we've got earlier and what the claims are I mean 118 kilowatts it's totally okay for this size battery but I was hoping that this car could have even faster charging I mean I, I was fully aware that we weren't going to get any more than that but when I initially picked up this car I was hoping that it could charge a little bit faster because as you can look it, it's, it's mid table I mean 34 minutes from 10 to 80 percent it's okay this car having you know uh, a WLTP range of 444 kilometers redeems itself somewhat because you know you get that almost 550 kilometer per hour charging speed but if this car would do like 130 that would be better but it would be digging too much maybe into the performance of the uh, the big battery version one but I've said I think there's room to perform to improve the big battery version so I mean it's okay and with the preheating that really helps the situation because as long as you you know navigate to that uh, DC fast charger using the built-in navigation you're gonna get these speeds you're gonna get these speeds when it's uh, summer you're gonna get these speeds as I've shown today when it's around zero to four degrees Celsius and I'm pretty sure once it goes you know two digit uh, negative temperatures here in Norway you're still gonna get that speed or close to that speed so that's very important to think about not only you know getting that speed at the most you know uh, optimal conditions but getting that speed just on a daily basis using the car you know uh, like it's meant to be used so I'm going to push these manufacturers because I really think we should get that 10 to 80 percent charging speed down to 25 or 30 30 minutes at least I think many of these cars are able to go down to 30 minutes but once we get that down to 25 and 20 minutes charging speeds are so fast that it really really doesn't matter so guys with this charging speed today I'm impressed that we actually charged you like two and a half minutes quicker than the Polestar 2 long range uh, dual motor from 10 to 80 percent so guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below so I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always guys please subscribe see you guys later and goodbye